Hello and welcome. My name is Adam Velengawa and today I am going to review iTrace from Tracy. This is an aberometer, keratometer and autorefractometer that utilizes ray tracing technology to provide you with easy to read maps useful for refractive and premium IOL surgery. Let's review iTrace. This is how the machine looks from the outside. There are handles for keeping the hands of the patient. Then at the back, there is a hole that the patient has to fixate through it so that you know he's relaxed. Uh, the operation of the machine is on joystick. There is a computer screen and uh, there are Placido rings in the front. So this is the database window and you can see date of examination, name of the patient. You can add the patient by clicking on this plus button. Then you can start the examination of the patient or see the images. It's, it's super simple. If you click on the right arrow, you can see the examination, the past examinations, and you can start a new one different types of examination. So there is an icon for corneal topography, wavefront analysis, or both if you want to take both the corneal topography and the wavefront. After you successfully acquired examination, you can review it. And this is the verification window. You can discard it or accept that. This machine uses a technological ray tracing and it's different than hartmann shock sensors or dynamic sciascopy used in other aberometers. The difference is that here you have 256 points that are basically scanning the eye and falling on the retina and the machine can see where those points are located on the retina. This technology is mostly useful for keratoconic eyes, for patients who have uh, higher order aberrations, and you can actually decrease and see whether those points align in one single point. This would be the optimal situation in an eye in which all the points will fall on one spot on the retina. Here, it's not the case because the patient has 4.5 diopters of astigmatism and you can see this astigmatism. So the patient actually sees all the world like this American football. After you're done with the examination, this is what you are going to see. So this is the wavefront and corneal topography summary display. And this is the most important display that this machine offers. So here you have all the information, including refraction based on zonules, angle alpha, higher order aberrations. Um, then you have the axial map and you have the aberrations based on whether it's total, internal, meaning probably the lens or cornea. Based on this display, you can actually see whether the patient is a good candidate for lens exchange or whether the patient should have uh, laser uh, refractive procedures. Naturally, you don't have pachymetry here, but still this is this is very useful. And if you're trained, if you really spend a lot of time on this machine, you can you can tell what, what kind of surgery the patient is a good candidate for. So what is unique for this machine is the dysfunctional lens index. This is a kind of objective way of measuring the optical state of the lens. So 10 is the highest, it's like a newborn lens and zero is like super dense cataract. Uh, and here this patient has 5.2, which is kind of in the middle. Uh, and this patient actually asked us whether he's a candidate for laser or phakic IOL. And it turned out that he already has these opacities um, that are visible on the opacity map. And we suggested that he should rather have the clear lens exchange rather than phakic IOL or laser treatment. He was in his 40s. This machine is meant mostly for refractive, so you have all the information, angle alpha, angle kappa, white to white, um, and there is also a simulation for rotation of a toric lens that's already implanted, so if it makes sense to, to rotate or doesn't make sense to, to rotate the lens. Now let's talk about the MTF, which stands for the Modulation Transfer Function. This is basically a, a graph that shows you how contrast sensitivity differs and changes with the size of the letters. So percentage is the contrast and then the x-axis shows you the size, right? The, the more, the smaller the size. And then there is this red box, right? So it's 40% contrast and then it's 10 degrees of arc. This is the danger zone because if the patient yellow curve falls within this danger zone, it means he's not a good candidate for premium IOL. So you can see how will this curve change when you add 
the spherical correction and how it changes when you add the cylindrical correction. So for instance, this patient is not a good candidate for multifocal IOL, but he's a good candidate for toric. Naturally, it just shows you the contrast, doesn't give you information about the uh, angle. Alpha, for instance, here, it's it's pretty, pretty large. Anyway, it, it gives you this perception of like, should you even consider this patient for premium IOL in a very, very fast way. So this is the, these are the maps with uh, spherical correction and the patient is going to be very happy. This patient on the other side is a good candidate for premium IOL. As you can see, even without glasses, his vision falls outside. And then if you add the spherical correction, his vision is going to be far better. There's also a depth of focus curve. The red dots are the patient's focus. The yellow bars uh, are basically like this range of vision between the diopters, between minus one and here uh, plus one. And then everything above the green line makes sense for the patient. It's in focus. Everything below is out of focus. When do you need this? Well, for instance, if you're considering monovision for a patient, right? If the both eyes are already uh, have some sort of monovision because one has different focus than the other, then the patient is certainly a good candidate for uh, such uh, type of correction. And naturally, all the displays can be uh, seen with glasses, without glasses, and without the astigmatism. So this is quite useful for explaining the patient how his vision is going to uh, to be, how his vision is right now, how it can be actually improved. And uh, it's also important for managing expectation. This machine also gives you the Placido rings, so you can see the tear film. And in the latest upgrades which we don't really have, uh, you can have some sort of tear film index, right? So for dry eye, so it's very easy to use toric planner so you can see where you can you can put where your incision is and how big the incision is and then also see the axis and it's available for multiple lenses that are most commonly used all right so who is this machine for i would start by saying referrals so uh I work in a university clinic and we have plenty of referrals from other centers, patients who are unhappy after refractive surgery, after premium IELTS. And this machine really allows you to like discern what, where the problem is, whether it's the problem of the lens, whether it's the problem of the, of the cornea and what kind of problem can you fix that? So for that reason, if you have plenty of referrals, uh, from, from other centers, some messed up surgeries, then uh, I, I think that this is a right device for you. Another group of patients, thanks to these dysfunctional lens index, are the patients for press biopia laser treatment. For those patients, you want to actually see whether the, they have no problems in the lens, whether the lens is clear, and uh, having a sort of like an index, objective way of measurement that. It's also very important why doing the clear lens exchange makes sense, whether doing the press biopia makes more sense. This machine really offers you an objective way of doing this. Another question is, can this machine be used as a standalone autorefractometer? I think the answer is yes, but it's not as fast as, let's say, autorefractometers from Topcon or, or NIDEC. So unless you like super premium cataract or refractive uh, surgery center and you don't really have many patients, this can function as autorefractometer as well. But, you know, if you have plenty other patients, then I would suggest buying uh, some other machine. So right now I need to be very careful because uh, I'm going to talk about non-organic vision loss. And I think this machine is super useful uh, because we all have patients like this, right? Patients who uh, don't really have any issues with the anything between the lipid layer and the occipital cortex, and still they claim that their vision is bad. Sometimes it's the psychological problems, sometimes it's the insurance that they want to, to get. But this machine really offers you a very quick way to put the cornea and the lens out of equation, right? You don't need to do any shine flug, you don't need to do any OCT of the anterior segment. You just do it and you see basically objectively how the patient's vision should be based on the those two factors, right? I'm not talking about electrophysiology, I'm not talking about retina, I'm not talking about the, uh, the brain, but basically those two primary sources of uh, interferences in vision are out. 
So the bottom line of the eye trace is that this machine turns all these difficult concepts like the corneal aberrations, like the adaptive focus, into easy to read maps, right? And that's the beauty, that you don't need to be advanced in optics to actually understand how the eye and the optics of the eye functions, thanks to all these nice and easy to read maps. What are the downsides? Well, the first thing is it's not really connectable to lasers, right? So if you have a laser, you still need a workstation to process all the data and then they can be transferred automatically to, to your laser. So that's the first thing. Secondly, it's just topography based on Placido, which we know it's not really that super accurate. So if you want to see pachymetry, if you want to see elevation of the posterior surface, you need corneal tomography, either Schweinfluck or OCT based. Uh, so it, it doesn't really have that, uh, which means you need yet another machine. It's going to be an addition to your already existing machine. It cannot replace, let's say, Pentacam, Galilei or Kasia. Having said that, I still believe that this machine is very useful because it can provide you with all the information you need for just screening. Uh, and determining type of surgery for a certain patient. For that application, this machine is really amazing. And although at the beginning it's, it's quite overwhelming, all those graphs and colors that you see, after a while you will really get used to it and it will really decrease time you need to spend on looking at the maps. Thank you for watching my review. I hope you've enjoyed. Please subscribe to my channel and goodbye.